Do you remember your dreams? I do. Every second of them. I leave this place and come into a world all my own, where my nightmares are reality, and every little thing inside my head makes up the force in which I walk. Surrealism, a 20th century avant-garde movement which sought to release the creative potential of the unconscious mind. In surrealist artwork, you might see a lot of things like the juxtaposition of nature and machinery, dreams illogical and frightening, and the perfect nonsense of the world in a teacup. The founder and spokesman of the new surrealist movement, which derived out of Dada's anti-war and nihilist sentiment, was the poet and critic André Breton. He penned the Surrealist Manifesto in 1924, which was fueled by Sigmund Freud's publications on dreams and the unconscious earlier in the century. Whereas Freud wanted to cure us of our irrational thoughts, Surrealists thought to embrace departures from rational thought. Breton wanted to free the imagination from conscious control and from aesthetic or moral preoccupations. Enter Salvador Dali, a man whose fantastic and flamboyant personality became more synonymous with surrealism than his work. He was born to a middle-class lawyer whose strict discipline caused him great fear and anxiety, and a loving mother who he worshipped until her death. It is important to note the nine months before Dali's birth, his brother, duly named Salvador, died. This haunted him his entire life. We resemble each other like two drops of water. But we had different reflections. These tragedies, the death of a loving matriarch, an abusive father, and a reflection of his existence disappearing before he was ever born, would set the stage for the man who would be known as one of the greatest surrealists of all times. Even he might have known this. At the age of 22, he dropped out of art school because none of his teachers were competent enough to judge his work. His words, uh, not mine. Would you be considered a leading man? Yes. When he made his way to America in 1937 to flee Nazi occupation, he became the talk of the town. Having already made a name for himself with his work, The Great Masturbator, in 1929, and then two years later with The Persistence of Memory, these two paintings flabbergasted and mystified the, the great art critics of the 20s and 30s. Well, one signified the confusion of sexuality, grotesque complexity, and nihilism. The other seemed to make us question physics, philosophy, and Einstein's theory of spatial relativity. Everyone was in awe of his work, which seemed to have no rules, and the most imperialist fury of precision. When the world met the man behind the painting, he was more of a character than a man. He was 5'7 and wore crazy coats. He said wild things and grew a long mustache. Maybe in this era, you could find him anywhere on the streets of Portland, but in his time, he was eccentric. Everyone wanted to meet this weird, fur-wearing, crazy mustache man. So if we were to see you at night, we would see a drooping mustache and uh, see a different dolly, in other words. He seemed to love the ridiculous and irrational. One masquerade ball, he even dressed up as the Lindbergh baby and his wife Gala, his kidnapper. He became more infamous than famous. And even Sigmund Freud once said, This boy looks like a fanatic. Even the way he created was surreal. He used the paranoiac critical method to liberate imagery from his subconscious, deliberately cultivating self-induced hallucinations that merged dreams and fantasy with reality. Dolly would spend weeks at a time in a manic state, creating his works before dining with the likes of Coco Chanel. He created stage sets for ballets, decorated store windows, sculptures, and even appeared in commercials. There seemed no end to his antics. He drew on every check so they couldn't cash them. He even showed up at the London International Surrealist Exhibition in a deep sea diving suit and slowly suffocated inside while a crowd of his peers watched, nearly dying. When the Surrealist group held a trial to kick him out, he once said, the only difference between me and the Surrealists is that I am a Surrealist, which goes to show you can do anything if you just put your mind to it. 
Surrealism for Dolly was not just the unconscious mind coming out. It was absurdist. It was ridiculous. It was his ability to twist and turn reality with it. Later in his life, when his love, Gala, passed away, after many times of trying to commit suicide, including a fire and slowly attempting to dehydrate himself, Dolly gave one interview. In it, he said, When you are a genius, you do not have the right to die, because we are necessary for the progress of humanity. So, what surrealist and absurd thing have you done today? Like and subscribe. Je suis fou du chocolat l'envers.